Hey guys, it's your girl Apollonia Cross coming at you guys with a new plan and chat and I am so, so, so excited for today's plan and chat because I'm bringing on my girl Tatiana from the Stationary Muse who is also a mom of a cute little girl. Our girls are actually, I think they're the same exact age if I remember or not, or really, really close in age. Um, but she's also a business mentor, a shop owner, and she's just really, really amazing and great coach and is becoming a great friend too. So I am so excited to be able to bring her on. And we wanted to do this plan and chat. So that way we can kind of give some insight to a couple of different things. But the main thing that we wanted to talk about is how to be in the season that you're in and embrace it right now so that way you can learn how to cultivate your new blessings that's going to come in your next season because we've all been through so much this year so many things have been crazy and so some people may be feeling stuck i know i have this year has been really crazy but through the hard times there's also the great things that come and so because we are both moms we both have our shops and then we're also both working on our coaching businesses too we decided to do our plan and chat or not our plan and chat we decided to do this plan and chat but we also decided to do a collab on a youtube video too about our planning walls since we both ended up making planning walls too so i'm excited to have her come on i'm just waiting for the notification to come up but as you guys are hopping on make sure you say hello let me know where you're at in the world and if this is your guys' first time tuning with me welcome my name is apollonia cross and i help working moms learn how to improve their self-care through creative planning so that way they can learn how to manage themselves as well as their busy family's lifestyle so um let me yep oh, there we go got the notification and so as we're going through the video you guys this is meant to be engaging and have fun so you guys can comment send us um questions if you have and we can answer them on the video and for those of you who end up catching this on the replay make sure you post hashtag replay in the comments with your questions too so we can get those notifications and answer them later so let me go ahead and see there you go hey. Hi. <laughs> this is how my, you doing this is my first time doing a joint live so i didn't know if i was supposed to hit the button i was like uh, I was about to <laughs> you know what now that i think about it i probably should have like gave you some spark notes like i don't know why i didn't even think about <laughs> just a little something but it's okay it's okay we're good. right my bad my bad my bad Hi, <laughs> yeah so you guys i'm so excited this is tatiana i almost called you stationary muse she is the stationary muse but this is tatiana she is awesome and she's super sweet and fun as you guys can already kind of get to tell her energy is just really really great so Thank you so much for agreeing to do this planet chat. And I know our combo is just going to be fun. This yeah, is going to be oh fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having so, me. I'm excited. Yeah, I am too. And aren't you so proud of me? I have your sweater on today. What and it doesn't have any spit up. It doesn't have spit up. Is it, it stain free? Girl, girl, it's stain free, <laughs> breast milk free, slobber free, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> this this sweater has been through some things the very first day, so it is very mother approved and business approved. I've been wearing it since well today since the afternoon, not three a.m. the other day. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's durable. No, sure. So welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to get into this topic because the one of the biggest things for you for your your entire vision for your shop, your entire vision for your business and your coaching is live, love and inspire. And so can just tell us a little bit more about your shop and also your coaching. Yeah, definitely. So yes, the stationary muse, it is a lifestyle and a paper goods brand. And it was basically started to just inspire women to go for what they want in their lives. And like you mentioned, the tagline is Live, love, inspire. So basically live life to the fullest, love yourself hard, and inspire others. So that's like my life motto. It's become my business motto. And through me just kind of sharing my just journey of growing the stationary muse, 
um, I started kind of sharing my behind the scenes of growing my business and I've become a business coach more recently for women to help them start their own stationary businesses and to really get out of their own way, you know, move the fear out of the way and just finally start. So yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm one of her her peoples, her peoples who dang her coaching. And she does really, really work really great. And it's nice that it's one thing that I really always loved about your channel and then also on what you do is you showcase as a working mom with your daughter with you and it's so important for us women to be able to see that being modeled because for years we've always been taught and it's been trained and embedded in our mind that you have to choose one or the other you have to either be a mom or you got to be a boss like you can't have both and so for your channel I love how you really incorporate that and you really show quite a bit of the behind the scenes and it's just a part of your brand and it's a great way to really help the mom who's really like struggling with, you know, just her mindset about trying to even get to this point. Like, I wish I can do this, but my kids, I wish I can do this, but home or whatever. There's all of those things. So was that your entire vision with that? No, not at all. But I think because so where we live, we don't have any family here. It's just me, my husband and my daughter. We know a few people, but I think I just kind of was in the mindset of like, you know, it's me and her, you know, we're here together during the day. And so it's like, I kind of have to figure it out. And as much as I definitely don't like put her on my channel a ton, but you know, if she happens to be awake or if she happens to be in the mix of what I have going on, I just kind of roll with it because that's just life and it's natural. And I think that it's a great example for just women that there might be women out there that might feel like, oh, I'm not going to be able to continue the things that I love to do if I have kids or, um, you know, like right. we've had discussions about this of like where you feel like your life is over, like you we've talked about because you have kids. And um, before I had her, I was like, I cannot stop the things that I love to do. I have to make sure that I still continue to do that. And so she's just become just a natural part of what I already was doing. So um Thank you for, you know, spotlighting that because that's not even something that I really thought about. But um, I'm glad that it's a part of the channel for sure. Yeah, no, because it's like you and I always talk about that, probably because during our meetings that we got your your daughter popping in or one of my four kids is popping in a video like it's just (laughs) kind of what it is. Right. And especially right now with it being, you know, with like that's the funny thing before COVID, this was life already. But we were I know for me personally, I was trying to hide it. And so once COVID and everything hit, now all of a sudden, everyone's veils just kind of dropped. And yeah, the overwhelm and everything just really, really went crazy. And so many people probably did give up. And but when you think about it, it's like, there are there is going to be the seasons like we've all we're all like we all went through a valley like when COVID first hit it was a straight valley like period point blank yeah like and that's and that's okay some people are still in the valley and some people have already reached the mountaintop through this valley you know but I think the biggest thing and that's so important is like what you and I talked about is once we were able to really kind of accept ourselves and accept where we were at. It's like, you know what, this is where I'm at. This is what it is. They don't like it. It's okay. Like at the end of the day, I have to still do for me and my family and I'm okay with that. And that ended up opening so much for me personally. And then I know for you too, like, I think we both kind of like not, we haven't, like really been trying to do the same exact thing, but we kind of end up doing like you were talking about your spiritual growth and how that's really been something that you've really been diving in lately. Oh yeah. And how it's changed like just over this past year. I think that's probably been doing a lot for everybody right now through COVID like, and But how, so how would you say, like, with this season, what were some of the things that you really, really had to dig deep in and to kind of really 
make that decision? What were some of those big significant things for you? Yeah, I would say so definitely right at the beginning of 2020. I had um, a really bad panic attack. It was the first one I had ever had in my life. And so that was kind of the start of it. This was before like in the coronavirus stuff ended up coming up. And so I was already dealing with that at the beginning of the year and um, trying to figure that out and like scared that I was going to have another one and being here with my daughter by myself because it's really scary if you've ever had one before. And so that kind of started it for me and my anxiety level was really on 10. And I think I was dealing with, even for her to have been over a year old, I was dealing with some kind of like postpartum anxiety type of thing. Um, really afraid and not to get like super serious, but like really afraid of like dying and like just things that were just super crazy. And so from there, um, that was really when I started to figure out other ways to just, I couldn't rely on myself at that point. So I'm like, let me kind of get back into church. We've been here. We at that point, we had been here for a little over three years and we still hadn't gotten like a home church um, or anything like that. And so we just decided to start attending online with um, Transformation Church, which is the one that I watch every Sunday now. And so then once COVID hit and everything, it was like my anxiety levels. I was just starting to kind of manage it and get myself together. And then all, and then all of a sudden out. it's like, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, is this for real right now? So then it was like, <laughs> like you said, it was like a valley. I went right back down. I had just started kind of slowly, you know, making my way back up. And then that happened. And so um, that was when I really was like, okay, I am going to have to just take some time away from the things that are just kind of keeping me anxious. And I just really started getting more into building my relationship with God, figuring out what that is. Um, attending church regularly, actually taking notes and, you know, reading the Bible, like actually getting into it versus just kind of being an attendant and that's it. So um, I would say that's some of the things I started doing is just attending church regularly and just starting to actually understand um, the Bible in a sense and how it can really help me to get through this crazy life <laughs> that we are in. So, yeah. Right, right. And I love that you said that is that you had to figure out how it worked for you and to study and how the studying applied for you. And that's so important because everybody's walk and everybody's lifestyle, everything that we're going through is so different. So we can't always try to compare from you know, I can't compare my journey to your journey. You can't compare your journey to my journey. We can kind of be there for each other. But to go through, especially when you're on a low, yeah. it is not the best thing to try to start comparing yourself to other people's situations in life that's right. going on. Because everyone is definitely different. And I love how for you, you said that you had to really start to get in this, it seems like this curious phase of trying to answer this question for yourself. Like, how is this going on for me? What, how can I get past this? And I think that's really, really important within the journey of trying to figure out how to really understand the season that you're in. Because when we're going through these seasons, they're all for a reason. Right. And so if we're going through the season now, it's like, okay, what am I doing here? Like, what's the reason? And especially if you're not, if it's a low season, you're just like hanging on. Like, right. you're, just, you're just like, I think that's the best word that I could probably give, like hanging on. Like, how do you feel? Yeah. I mean, you're just basically like, I'm here and. I showed up today. We'll just see what happens today. Like, <laughs> right. Like today I took a shower. That's, that's great. Right. <laughs> right. And that's literally how I was at the beginning of last year. That was me for probably the first, like little over the first quarter was that was me that whole first part of the year. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like wake up, waking up. Okay. I got out of bed for five minutes now <laughs> and I can get back in bed. And sometimes it's like that and that's okay. Yeah. And I think, like you said, you had to figure out ways for you that was going to allow you to start the process of healing. And for you, that was getting more into the word and seeking God more and getting more into studying yeah. and then learning how you can apply that for yourself. And for someone 
what would you say to someone who maybe isn't really spiritual? Like, what would be something that you would recommend for them to do? Maybe just some general tips or whatnot. So actually, on top of that, another thing I didn't even mention was I also did get back into going to therapy because I really felt like, yeah, you know, I was getting into the word and things like that. But I also wanted someone to talk to. And I didn't really want to necessarily like freak my husband out with, you know, the things or him be like, OK, I married a crazy lady, you know, something like that. So <laughs> I was like, let me, you know, just kind of like connect with somebody. So I ended up getting with like a counseling company. So I think one thing I will say, whether you're spiritual or not, is to definitely seek guidance um, from people to just get another opinion from somebody that you can talk to that's really like outside of the situation that doesn't really know a whole lot about the baggage you have or anything. Um, and from that, I actually learned a lot of ways to just kind of cope um, with a lot of the things I was dealing with, with, especially with the anxiety and stuff that I was dealing with. And he would specifically tell me like, you know, like, well, why are you, are you scared to have another panic attack? And it's like, I had one on a Friday evening and if y'all, when I tell you every Friday evening, I thought I was going to have one. And it was almost like I was creating it for myself just out of fear. It's crazy how our minds can just take us wherever mm -hmm. you know that is. And so that would be my biggest thing is just whenever you feel yourself getting ready to go to that place, once you kind of know and you can acknowledge it, find ways to distract yourself. You know, maybe you get into meditation, maybe it's breathing, maybe you read your favorite book, turn on music you love, um, whatever, maybe eat some ice cream, maybe not for everybody, but you know, whatever the case <laughs> is, to just kind of like take your mind off of that thing that is depressing you or making you anxious. Um, mm -hmm. And just seeking help above all is important. Never feel like you're alone and you don't have anybody to talk to. Right. Yeah. Right. Like definitely, definitely. I love that you said acknowledging because that is like the step one. And that is the very first process. No matter what type of a health and wellness journey you're on is acknowledging where you're at. Like knowing something is so powerful. Just the fact that you know. And especially for someone who deals with or has dealt with postpartum depression and anxiety. Like I, I have, that's the biggest thing, which is probably why we're into planners, but I have this conversation with my husband every time I'm like, honey, I just need to know. I just need to know what's going on. I don't care. I just need to give me time. Blocks. Just give me a little bit. I just need something because otherwise it stirs and it's one of, it's a trigger, like the fear of not knowing or, and it doesn't even have to be big. Y'all just, I just want to know when you're working. When are you going to go to work? Are you working Friday? Or are you not working Friday? Like, so why, are you, why are you in my head, though? Why, why, why are you? <laughs> like, something so, something so small. It's just the fact of, I just need to know for my own peace of mind. So that way I can have some type of peace within me. I'm not exactly. psycho. I'm not trying to be controlling. I'm not crazy enough to get a paycheck i'm like like you know like i'm none of those things you know those are the things i'm none of those things i promise i just need to know so that way i can be like like i'm not caught off guard and i think that's probably too it has something to play on with perfectionism i know that's that's another big one is this idea that everything has to be perfect or i need to be where i expected or planned myself to be because Lord knows we done planned everything. And, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And um, God is just like, yep, changing that, changing <laughs> that. And we just got to learn how to roll with the punches sometimes. Oh, my gosh. But I feel like so what, but let's let's kind of go into that. So what is something that where you really didn't think that you would be you would have learned through your season and how did you use your current season or where you were really struggling to help kind of switch your mindset, pull you out of that valley and then also end up taking you to a whole nother place that you didn't even think was possible. Hmm. Um, well, I think so. Another low point in my life definitely was my time after high school through college because I didn't necessarily and I, I don't, I've never really heard your story 100% with like the singing and stuff but I know that you were like in the singing and you were to be a performer I think and stuff like that because that yeah. was my that was my whole life plan like since I was probably like seven or eight years old I just knew that that's what I was going to do with my life so yep. um, yeah I think 
hitting that reality of, you know, going through that and having that in the back of your head. And then as life starts to happen and realizing that things are just kind of not happening, doors are kind of closing, you know, and stuff like that. Um, I really went through a really bad depression because I felt like I had failed already. Even though I was only like 21 years old, I already had felt like my life was over. Like I didn't amount to what I thought I was going to. And so yeah. through that, now looking back at that almost 10 years ago when I was in that place, it's just interesting to see how it was some of the lowest points, but it was some of the best lessons that I learned. Um, and some of the things that have happened have really made me grateful for even some of the smallest things today. So I think the biggest thing that I've taken away from just you know going through those low points and different things is realizing that there's always going to be things that we don't like and we're not going to really understand why it's happening but i'm trying to learn because now i've been through a few of these seasons and i've seen my way out and god has seen me out so i'm kind of like i'm now getting to a point where i'm just like you know what this sucks right now i don't understand it i'm questioning it and i'm fighting the whole way but at the same time i know that it's for a reason and eventually i'm going to get out of it so that's really mm -hmm. the biggest takeaway I've gotten is that I know that things are going to be okay eventually, even if I don't have an answer right now or even though it's happening tomorrow, you know. Mm -hmm. How like having that as a mindset is like, I don't know what's going on right now. I know it sucks and I'm just going to wake up every day, but I know what I'm going to get out of this. Right. And I think like it's important to because sometimes you don't feel that way. You don't whatsoever at all. And um, but you may not feel that way. But then when you have that deep knowing, it's like right now it's just really tough. But I know that this isn't it. And having I think that's so important to really understand where you're at. Because, yeah, okay. for me, the same type of a thing is when I, you know, I stopped music and acting too and yeah. you know life went straight into being a mom and all of that I was still trying to and fighting and I just had to make that decision like you know it's not and it was very very tough and probably well yours wasn't related to also having your kids but you know I had my son and so having him and then struggling with letting that go and so yeah it was regular depression postpartum depression it was like all just like one at once but yeah, like, I, and I, re, I, and at least you sought to go and get help. And I think that's, so, that's so big. And I want, I, I, I'm sure you know, but I really want you to know that it's so powerful that you're even able to even honor that and share that as a part of your story, because most of us, it's not and it's such a fear especially for black women it's oh, like no um no i gotta do it all like we have such we got like there's wonder woman and then there's like black wonder woman okay, like right right <laughs> and i don't say, i don't say that to be funny but y'all know what i mean like right. you like it's just it's like beyond it's like there's no way no i don't need help i can't accept help I blah, blah, blah and then so we have this stigma and that mentality but yet we are desperately in need of the help and so when you're actually able to be in the space to be like no i i need this help and then actually go and allow yourself to receive the help that is that is so much strength and power and i want for you those of you guys who are in a season and you're like debating and you feel like you need help girl Sis, get you help. It's please, yes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's so important. Like that, it's okay for us to ask for outside help, and especially seeking therapy. There's no shame in it. There's nothing wrong with it, and it's there's so much power that can happen in that. And sometimes we need that outside person and going to your best friend is not always the best thing it's not <laughs> always a, thank you yeah yeah is that because that that could uh that could just keep you going down and it's just <laughs> you know you got to figure it out and i don't know what happened in my head today, but whatever but yeah i know so for help i really struggled a lot alone 
And it affected a lot of, for me personally, it affected uh, my relationship, my husband, how I was to my kids. Mm -hmm. And it got very, very toxic and scary. And then I just, I don't know where the change or the click really happened. I think I, that's what ended up spiraling me into I need to change and what got me on my health journey. And then that helped me pull out of it. And then now it's like completely manifested into this where I want to help women who are like me. Yeah come out of that same thing and you never know why you're going through a season like i remember those times where i would cry and say like why like why i can't be the only like literally crying upset in a closet like literally like in a closet crying like why am i the only one going through this and always doing that and then like you i got curious i was like i can't be the only one why aren't it wasn't anyone talking about this i'm like i'm not going to be alone i'm not going to do this and so you have to so at some point it's like you have to find the fight within you to keep going yeah because otherwise it does get very very dangerous and scary and it's so important to understand kind of where you're at and I, I just really acknowledge, like you said, acknowledge where you're at and take inventory of like, are you in a safe place? Because if you're not, then we need to go somewhere to become safe again. Right. Because otherwise, yeah, it can definitely very much get dangerous. So that was heavy. I didn't know we was going to Oprah today, but okay. <laughs> But I mean, it was needed for some reason. Somebody maybe needs to hear that. And so, yeah, no, it's, it's good. It's good. Yeah. So we got a little bit heavy. So let's take it to fun. So we, you have your planner shop and your sticker shop. So would you say that that was your sticker shop created kind of in the, while you were in the a valley or was it just like an idea that came up? Um, it was kind of, yes, I was in the valley, I guess you could say. So after um, kind of going through that season, after leaving college, having all the odd jobs, I moved and I ended up getting a job as an administrative assistant. And so it was like another low point for me because I have nothing wrong with administrative assistants, but that just wasn't again where I saw my life. So it's like, you know, here we are again. Right. We saw ourselves being on stage and in movies and the right. red carpet. It's like, I'm not supposed to be uh, answering should be folks. typing at this damn desk. Right, exactly. <laughs> so it's like I was, yes, I was at another low point. And it's funny that you asked that because a couple weeks ago, I was going through like my old videos and stuff in my phone. And I had filmed this video um, before I had my daughter, before we moved here to New Mexico. And I was just like driving from work and I was just talking about how I want more for my life and how this can't be it. And just all of these different things. And so it was definitely a low point for me, just like looking back at that stuff. And it just really came through my love of already just loving to be organized and plan. And I've always been in the notebooks and journals and um, discovering the planner community online was just like this whole other layer of like, okay, I gotta be a part of this. And so, mm -hmm. yes, it definitely was birthed through me just wanting to have something that I was proud of, something that was mine, something I didn't have to answer to nobody for, and that I really felt like, okay, you know, I'm doing something that I actually want to be doing versus what I feel like I have to do. So, yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, I love that because, like you said, like, you had a completely different vision oh for your God. life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's so funny because and I love that you like you sang on your last um your live and I was like oh that's awesome and then um but I love that you did that but it was funny hearing you talk too about how like yeah you, like it's funny because when you go from being like the stage is just normal and it's just it's literally as normal and as comfortable as waking up in the morning and taking a shower and then to completely leave that part of your life. And when I, I, I don't know about you, but for me, I had to completely like for a long period of time, I didn't even listen to music because it was a trigger for me. And I would 
spill into that emotional spiral and feel a lot of resentment and stuff. And then, but now to where you're like, yeah, I don't really sing anymore. And we're, you're shy. And it's like, I don't know why I'm so shy. I'm just a little scared, right? Right. I don't know. I think that's the weirdest thing now looking back at it. Cause, but yeah, it's funny. But yeah, I just really, love it's like, weird. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just saying it's really weird. I definitely did completely stop as well. Com like after I kind of accepted it, I was like, whatever. And then I didn't actually start singing again until I moved and started singing in church. And that was when I started slowly getting back into it. But then when we moved here, it stopped completely again. So I was just like, yeah, <laughs> it's the whole thing. <laughs> right, right. Like, I don't, yeah. Even people when they see me, like who knew me like before, they're like, you don't sing. I'm like, no. I've, I've retired and you know I've adulted I've retired right, and right. had kids <laughs> that's what that's what happened right. and that's okay <laughs> right that chapter is closed it's all right we're on to a new chapter writing a whole new book it's completely fine and but I think like for everyone who's on and who's been hanging out with us on this chat like I think it's so important. I hope that our conversation and how we're sharing these things are really opening up for you guys to look at your current season in a completely different way. And even though it's hard, find your way to acknowledge where you're at, accept where you're at, and then start the process of the healing to find out what your new blessings are because there will be blessings as hard as it may not seem right now, but there will be. So let's, what are some like actionable things that you would recommend to someone who is probably just like, I understand y'all, I feel it, but I just don't see it. What, like who, if you could talk to someone like that, what would be some actionable things that you would recommend to them? Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, I think that it's always valid to feel that way, you know, to kind of not want to hear anything positive and be like, okay, whatever, I'm not, you know, on that, because I think that it's only healthy to deal with whatever emotion you are in that season. So um, mm -hmm. as much as I'm always about positivity and seeking things, I also am really big on letting yourself feel something too and give yourself grace if you don't feel like doing certain things, you know, as you're dealing with stuff, as long as you don't live in it and you don't stay there. Um, so that's the first thing I would just say is the action is just to do nothing, you know, just be just feel whatever you're feeling and kind of let that go for a little bit. But then after that, start to slowly find ways to, you know, like, pick yourself up and kind of get back into things. And I know, it's a really broad topic. So there's a lot of different things people could be dealing with for what pick yourself up really means. But um, even if it's just something as small as just like, you know, starting to go for a walk. You know, just getting fresh air. Like, I've really felt like when I actually work out, which will be proud of me, I've been working out consistently for, like, two weeks now. So, you know, I'm like, I'm doing my thing. So I've noticed, like, when I work out and stuff, like, I feel better. You know, like, if I'm having a bad day or my week's not going the best, like, doing that just makes me feel good about myself. It's not for anyone but for me. So, you know, finding things that you can do that are just for yourself, that make you happy. No one else has to know about it, but it's just so that you can start to slowly – build yourself back up to a place of where you feel happy so that you can get to a point of being the best mom and the best wife and all of those different things but it takes time so definitely mm -hmm. just giving, your, giving yourself grace and starting small are my things for sure right yeah. definitely give yourself grace and the space to actually allow yourself to grow and i think a lot of us try to you know we're like okay i'm no i need to be back like today no, sis. It's okay if you're not going to be back today. It is okay if you need to take a few months, maybe a right, year. Right, right. And it's, that's, I think that's the whole thing. Whatever it is, it's okay. You just have to know that right now is not where you're going to stay. It's just where you're at in this moment. And right. that's okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, two weeks on the workout tip. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, working out that that definitely helped me a lot, obviously. But it 
and it led into more because once you feel better then you start to try new things and then you'll be surprised at how much one small thing that kind of helps you get over one hurdle ends up opening your mind and your heart to so many other things right and just helps you keep on healing and just and it, you don't know where it's going to take you from that or where God's going to take you from that. And I think that's so important. Uh, so with your planner, do you do any, I know you talked about, you did some journaling reflection. Do you have like a specific wellness planner, like how I have, where you like do self-reflection and affirmations or anything? Like what is your actual like wellness or mindset routine like? Oh, well, the, do one you have to, the, the one that I'm trying to create. Oh, um no I mean honestly I don't really have one I'm gonna just keep it real with y'all I don't but some of the things that I like to do especially is I love to read like those different devotionals and things so I have like my grandmother gets them for me all the time like at least I don't know if she's trying to tell me something but like Christmas she's always getting me like these little three minute devotional here and things like that so um I love to read those I love to also just journal when I can I think sometimes I feel like I put a lot of pressure on myself to do it so that I end up not doing it at all but that's mm. something I definitely need to get better at is journaling so right now I'm kind of in a season of really just trying to figure out what the whole mindset and wellness thing really means for me and that's just from an honest place but I do love to like a quick thing read devotionals and get a workout in that's kind of like what I'm doing right now to get started and that's a great place to be like you're your wellness routine does not have to be two hours long. Yeah. It don't have to be like, it could be as simple as I washed my face and I woke up today and drank some water. Like it's, <laughs> and that's, and that's okay. It's all about the season that you're in and what works for you right now in your lifestyle. And I love that you said that you're like, I'm the one I'm about to create. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I can't lie. Like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> right. I was like, yeah, so I do this. I like that candle. I do these chakras and I do this. But, you know, it's not like that for everybody. And I've tried like, it all. Like, don't get me wrong. I've tried it all. Like, last year, at the beginning of last year, I was doing, like, meditation. And then I would listen to, like, these affirmations. And then I would do this breathing. Like, I was trying to do everything when I was getting through that anxiety and everything. But that's doing too much. And it actually made my morning <laughs> stressful when I had yeah. to think of all the steps I had to do. So I'm trying to figure out how to do things that I actually love, not where I feel pressure. Because there's so many like morning routines and stuff that you see other people doing. And it's like, oh, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do it. And it's like, no, calm it on down. <laughs> calm it right. Down. Pull it right back a little bit. <laughs> right. Like your morning, your morning routine is supposed to be your morning routine. Exactly. What lifts you up and makes you feel good. Sometimes it is the yoga and the meditation and the soft music and all that for me. Other times it's I'm a light a candle and I'm a turn up Beyonce and be all the woman I could be while my husband and my boys are sleeping and don't have nothing to say to me. Like, <laughs> and that's okay. It's going to be different every day. It's not supposed to be the same. And I just think that I feel like too, for some women embracing your, your femininity and being proud of that is so important because sometimes too, there is that stigma of, you know, you're a feminist, you're only, you're like, you're a man hater or whatever. It's like, slow your roll. No, I'm not. I'm just right. happy and confident in me and all of this I got going on. So you work on you, I work on me. <laughs> like, that's the mindset we got to work on a habit and be like, right. I'm working on this. You work on that. And it's okay. It's all okay. So I love this. This was a fun combo. Um, we did do our planning wall video. So if you guys haven't checked those oh, out, yeah. make sure you guys check them out. Right. We, we're supposed to be announcing this giveaway and stuff. And we just over here talking and having a good time. But I hope you guys got some value. We shared and covered quite a bit in today's planning chat. So I hope you guys really enjoyed. But um, so we're doing this. We were, we're not doing, yeah. So we are doing a giveaway for our different shops. My shop is Plan Her Way to Fit, for those of you guys who don't know. And hers is the Stationery Muse, which is she's on right now. Uh, but we're going to be giving away $25 shop credit 
to two different winners um, who liked our YouTube channel, subscribed, and watched our videos, and also followed us here. And there were two names that came up. I wrote them down in oh, my Live, Love, Inspire planner. Hey. And this is her planner, you guys. The Live, Love, Inspire business planner is great. I love it, and I use for my business, like, all, look at all – all of it. Oh, so I, I, I love my see. planner. You can use it. And it's plenty of space too. If you don't want to have multiple planners, you can use it for life and business. But um, so Diana Venegas, I think is how you say the last name and blue skies is the other person. So I will be messaging you guys with your shop credit info. Congratulations. And thank you guys so much for the support. Um, but so yeah, Look out, you guys, for those DMs. I will make sure to message you guys with the info. And can you let everyone know where you are at? And um, before we close out, just let everybody know how they can find you for your shop and let everybody know if they're interested in connecting you more on for business mentorship so they can start their own stationary business, how they can connect with you there. Of course, yeah. So congratulations again to the ladies that won. Um, so yeah, you can find me the stationary muse on everything basically my youtube channel is probably where i hang out the most but i'm trying to get on in this instagram crowd a little bit more so you can find me at the stationary muse it is stationary with the e so remember that and then my coaching business is just my name so tatiana muse and I'm, my website tatiana muse.com um tatiana muse on instagram so that's kind of coaching and then shop with me is the stationary muse so super easy and yeah, I'm excited. I would love to connect. I love working with women. It's, it's truly my passion. Um, it's, I was just telling my husband earlier today, I'm like, I really think I have found my calling. There is nothing I love more than helping somebody get started and just get out of their own way. And so um, honestly, I just love what I do. But I'm really excited that you brought me on here. This was really fun. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for accepting. Oh, because yeah. I know we both were kind of like, oh, you know how you ever find, like, or you follow somebody on Instagram or YouTube or whatever, and you, like, get this, like, stardom, and you're like, I don't know if they see me, this little person over here. <laughs> like, we both had that for each other. So I yeah, think really we're like, like <laughs> <laughs> we're like, oh, you see me? Hi. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> and then when we're like, oh, we're actually both pretty chill with each other. Oh, right. That's so cool. So, yeah, you guys, this was such a fun plan and chat. And thank you again, Tatiana, for hopping on. I appreciate you. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let us know in the comments what you found was the most helpful and the most valuable for you that we were able to share and talk to you guys about. And also, if you guys like how we do these plan and chat talks, let me know a couple of ideas on conversations that you guys might want me to talk about in a couple of people who you might want me to invite on. And then we can see either bringing Tatiana back or anyone else, you know, who might be able to um, have fun with me and talk some deep things on how to up level and heal. So we can go ahead and do that. But thank you so much again, Tatiana, for hopping on. I can't wait till the next time because I know this is not going to be the last time. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, happy, almost said Thursday. Happy Friday. <laughs> I'm so happy it's Friday. Thank you, love. <laughs> right, everybody doing happy Friday dance. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks again for hanging out with us. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.